Okay, hope you're enjoying your guitar journey. And um, what I'd like to do now is to teach you another guitar technique called arpeggiation. All right. Now, up until now, pretty much in this beginner section, you've been working a lot on your rhythm and timing and learning chords and strum patterns and strumming. And you've been strumming chords, right? And learning different patterns and rhythms and long progressions and things like that. Or as Arnold would say, and things of that nature. Our lovely governor of California. Um, so what I'd like to do now is to talk a little bit about arpeggiation. And the way we're gonna the way you want to think of arpeggiation is just instead of strumming a chord, you're just gonna play the notes individually. I'm picking them individually. I'm still holding a G major chord, but instead of strumming it, I'm gonna play it like And he gets a totally different sound, and it's totally cool. And you could do that in patterns. Or we could do it while we're changing chords. So many different ways you could do it. And this is going to open up the doors to more ways that you can play kind of what you learned already, what you know already, but capture different sounds. And um, it's a beautiful technique, and you hear it now that you know it, you'll be like, oh, they're arpeggiating. Now that you're in tune to it, you'll be like, oh, I hear that all the time. So let's just take some basic, basic chord changes and practice our arpeggiation. And I'm going to show you the first way, just going straight up and down the strings, where you're not going to be really in a pattern. A lot of times you're going to be playing a pattern, like you'll play the G string, then skip over the B to the high E, then to the A, then to the D. And you'll be doing like this on the guitar, string, down, up, down, and that's a little bit more complex. At first, let's just go straight up and down with an easy change. First learn run, then learn fly, like I always say, and this will get you used to it. So let's just take like a basic change like G to D. G major to D major. And on that G major, just use the four finger G that we've been working on to D major. Okay? Now. On the G chord, let's just take a very easy pattern. Let's just do something like this. Okay, the strings I'm hitting, and this is what you want to pay attention to, and I, I know, you know, as I'm going away, I won't be looking. You're going to have to look at the strings. Just hold the G major chord with your fret hand, and you're going to pick the low E string, then the G string. And if you want, you could use down, two down strokes if you want to. Eventually, we're going to be using alternate picking downs and ups, but at first, you can go so low E, then skip over the A and the D to the G, then go all the way to the high E string and go up high E string, up B string, and up on the G string. So those three strings are just going up, up, up. High E, B, G. This stays on a G major chord. We haven't moved yet. So here's what we're doing. It's just two downs and then three, kind of think of it as three up. So it's just... Okay? And um, get into the flow of that. Play along. Okay? And then once you're confident with that pattern, which it's not really a pattern because we're really going straight up and down the strings. We'll get to patterns later. Then we're going to switch to the D major chord. Now what I'm doing on the D major chord again, finger D major, and then all, again, look right at the strings at first. Just don't like hunch your back over because that's bad for you. Try to, you know, stay upright and kind of just look down a little bit. And eventually, this will be second nature to you. It's going to take a little concentration at first, but you'll get it. So the notes or strings you're going to pick is first pick the open D, then with a down, and then go right to the next string, which is the G string with a down. And again, eventually we're going to be going down up. But for now, just to get started, I want to make it real simple. So you go down on the open D, down on the G, then do the same thing you did on the G chord with the high E string upstroke, high uh, B string upstroke, and G string upstroke. Just right up the strings in succession. This is a real easy one. So you get this sound. this, I 
arpeggiation, you're, 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 once you finger the chord, you're leaving it there, and that's it. And pressing down, you don't have to do anything with your left when hand. I started, just put your chord there and forget about it. Concentrate about the picking. Right, just concentrate on the notes that you're picking. Don't lean your back too far over, okay? Don't want anyone to get bad backs. So. One thing you might want to mention too, David, is is you, you have little pauses which between the picks. Right. Really, because do it with it without a pause. There's a big difference. Right. If you, if you do it fast, eventually you want to be... You don't want that right now. You want like this. I'm not even going to worry about putting a metronome on it or anything yet. You just want to be able to do this slow and I want to get you comfortable because at first it's probably going to sound like this. See, I'm like hitting, you're going to hit the wrong string or you might get it right and then the one time and then the next measure you'll get it wrong. It takes a little bit of time but you could do it, alright? I'll give you some harder ones as you go along but just nice and slow. Okay, so then once you got the G and the D, what we're going to do is you're going to change. You're going to do the pattern twice on the G and then switch to the D and then do it twice. Then go back and forth two times each, right? And that's an easy change. You've probably practiced that. G to D. You're going to be doing that with your left hand or your, your right hand if you're left of your fret hand. But you want to do it slow, so I'll do it super slow. So here's our, our G pattern. Switch to D. Back to G. Back to D. Back to G. Okay, and we can you could add more chords to that as we go along but I just want to kind of get you used to picking notes individually it's something very different than what you've been doing so far with the strumming pretty much the mechanics pretty much stays the same you're just going to be picking the notes okay and then eventually you get it a little bit faster once you get comfortable and you have something that'll sound like this Okay, so practice that, and you could do it with different chord changes, like um, let's take C major to E minor. That has that shared finger, that second finger stays on that E note as you pivot back and forth. That was a change that we worked on, right? So now for the C major chord, again, just I'll tell you what, this time let's just do this pattern. We'll just pick the A string. Then just go right down and do the D string, right in order, and then up on the high three high three strings the same way, up, 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 and you get this. Then change to E minor, and I'm just picking again the low two strings, the low E, then the A, then on the high three strings just right up, 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 up. Up on the high E, up on the B, up on the G. And you get something like this. Change. C major. E minor. Right? Easy. Easy and fun. And if you practice, don't worry if you hit the wrong string. That's what's going to happen at first. You got to get in the habit of knowing where your pick is and accuracy. And you will. It just takes time. And then eventually, add more chords to it. Like, do the G to the D. And maybe after that, add C add 9. So you're going to be changing from the D to the C add 9. Again, pretty easy change because you're leaving that third finger down. Remember that shared fingers. We've worked on that. So, on the C add 9, do the same thing. Low 2 strings. Right? And then back to the low 2. High 3. And from that, you got to go to the G. So you have G, D, C add 9. Let's see how that sounds. Sounds something like this. Again, I'll do real slow for you. D. 
two times each one. C at nine. Back to the G. Now it starts over again, so the G you're actually doing four times because the progression would be G, just to play it in time, D, C add 9, G, and then you repeat it. Okay? So practice that. Take some of our other progressions that you've learned so far, just two, three chords, or that G to E minor to C to D, and arpeggiate that. And again, you could, as long as you're playing in time, you can arpeggiate in a myriad of different ways, you know? I'll do G to E minor to C to D. Get creative and that you don't necessarily have to do the same thing each time. You could mix it up. You could have fun with it, you know. But this is more an exercise that I want to work on your accuracy, picking out notes individually, arpeggiating chords. So... chord change you're working on just to practice that arpeggiation, okay? Pick your own pattern. Play around. It's yeah. kind of, you can pick anything. You can pick it. It's, there's no boundaries. On right. This. Anything. Anything you could do. And then once you start getting good at that, you could start skipping strings. And that's when it's going to get a little harder. You know, like on that G or on those other chords we were coming on the high E. B, G. That's a little easier because you're going up, 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 right in order. But what if we did this and we went high E to the G, to the B. See, where you go high E, then skip the B string to the G, then go down to the B. So you gotta do like an up, down, up. Notice how that sounds different than what we did first. First we were going up, up, up on the high three strings. Right, that's one way. Straight up the high strings. Now watch when I skip over the B and then come back to it. Sounds different, right? So try that. Maybe G, D, C add 9, and the same two low strings on the G, or the low, play the low E, then the G string. Totally different sound. Then on the D. Back to the G. See, just by changing now that's going to be harder for you because you're going to have to skip a string, go up, then come back down. And that's when you're going to be like, ooh, I keep hitting the wrong string. You'll be so surprised how hard it is to get this hand to listen to you. It's your own, how little control you have over your own hand. But you'll get it. It just takes some time. So take some of those progressions and work on that arpeggiation. And then as you're listening to your songs and you're learning songs, start to listen to popular songs and you'll start to hear where maybe in different sections of the song they start to arpeggiate the chords and not strum them. And now you'll be like, oh, I know what they're doing there. They're arpeggiating it. Um, um, that's some of the wonderful choices you have on guitar. You know, you have a certain amount of measures for each chord, whether you strum it or arpeggiate it, or eventually you're going to learn adding suspended chords and spicing it up and add chords. That's the beautiful thing. You have all these wonderful choices. So em embrace that. An interesting side note regarding... I learned about 80 or 100 songs this last year, and the arpeggiation in a lot of these songs, they may be more, more complicated, but they're consistent for the song, normally from what I see. Meaning the pattern for a certain song, when they use it, it seems like they use that same pattern. It may be down, down, up, down, down, up, or something. Right. But yeah, a lot of times it's the, the right, in the song, like once you learn that pattern, whether the pattern be low E string, A string, while you're holding a certain chord, yeah. low E, A, then maybe high E, B, yeah, G or high E, um, maybe to the D string, to the B string. Whatever that pattern is, Tim's right, a lot of times, you learn it once, and it, it just keeps the hook or something. repeating it. Yeah, a lot of times that's the chorus, that's the hook. Yeah. So you just have to learn it once, and it might take a little time, but once you got it, you got it, okay? So this arpeggiation is a very important part in guitar. It's cool. It'll give you a whole new avenue to explore, 
and it's just going to take some time. Don't get discouraged. You're going to be hitting wrong strings. Your timing's going to be off. That's okay at first. Don't even put a metronome. Don't even worry about it. Just I want you accurate with the strings you're hitting. We haven't been working on that. We've been working on our strumming. Now I'm introducing some new concepts to you, okay? And soon you'll have these um, mastered as well. So pra keep practicing the right things. Follow these practice regimens. Don't forget to download the written lessons and print those out. When it says read the text below the video lessons, there's text below there. And it tells you if you need to download something or, or, or any other lesson that's coincided with that one. Okay, we're very thorough here and very structured, so I want to see you getting the best guitar education possible and using this resource to its fullest capacity. We'll see you soon.